So um, I guess I can just start uh, section by section. So 9.1 temperature, define temperature. I feel like most people here do know about temperature. Maybe uh, you might not be familiar with uh, different scales. Um, I think uh, there you probably should read about it. <laughs> um, but I think what I um, could uh, talk about uh, that actually relates more to section 9.3, defining heat as a transfer of energy, is uh, talking about just the different forms of energy. So um, this is one of simulations on fat. So I'm in the heat and thermal uh, section of the fat, phet.colorado.edu website. It's a great website with a lot of fun simulations that are totally free and uh, they are high quality. And it's very, um, I don't, okay, I don't know if they are well funded, but uh, I think they had a grant from National Science Foundation to uh, make initial set of simulations. It's really a great resource for learning physics, chemistry. And I think once you're on this website, they also have math and other materials too. So uh, I just wanted to use this energy forms and changes simulation to just uh, talk about different uh, forms of energy. Because up until unit two, we quite deliberately limited ourselves to uh, mechanical energy. That is kinetic energy and a few forms of potential energy. Uh, you've seen gravitational potential energy and spring potential energy. And um, as we talked about when I was introducing energy a few weeks ago, the defining characteristic of energy is that it's a conserved quantity. And when mechanical energy changes form into uh, something else that's not mechanical energy, we define new forms of energy so that the total energy is always conserved. So um, I guess I should have looked at the simulation before, but let me start out with the intro. So um, I guess I don't really necessarily know um, what I'm doing here. Um, I don't know if I like this intro. Uh, I could, um, I guess we can use this to talk about temperature. So what we can do is we can put an iron and brick block here. And what I think I can kind of do to um, illustrate is what happens to these two blocks as we uh, heat them. So just to illustrate the simulation, I have some control here. I can apply some, huh, it doesn't stick. Oh, link heaters, okay. So I can make sure I apply the same amount of heat. Okay, so I have iron block here, brick block here, and as I hit them together, so you have some intuition about heating things and you know their temperatures will change. Now, I hope you have this experience. When you heat things, as you heat them, um, things don't heat up necessarily at the same rate. And that's uh, what you are seeing here, that as I heat up iron and brick, and these two heaters are linked, I'm heating them, I, I'm transferring some amount of energy in some form at the same rate, but the brick block goes up in temperature faster than the iron block is doing. So something's different about that. And okay, I guess when I don't apply heat anymore, I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> um, and uh, is the brick block going down faster? Uh, well, um, and one way to cool down these things is to put them in water. And when you put them in water, then what you see is that the temperature of this block changes a lot. It cools down quite a bit and the water warms up a bit, but doesn't warm up quite as much. Interesting. And if I were to do the same thing with the brick, putting it in olive oil, then what you see is that oil maybe goes up in temperature a little bit more. Was it because of difference between iron and brick? And this is where you can spend a lot of time doing the experimenting. And I guess what I want to leave you here with is um, there is a connection between temperature 
and uh, what we call heat energy or thermal energy. And for most of the material, the connection is not um, trivial. It's not, um, it's, uh, it's, like, um, it's like a relationship that really depends on the material you're talking about, how much there is and all that stuff. So uh, you can, so, uh, <laughs> so one thing that you can rely on is the temperature that you see and the amount of energy that we are going to call thermal energy or internal energy, that relationship is linear. So that happens to be um, kind of easy to understand. But beyond that, that it's a linear, um, the, how the temperature exactly corresponds to the thermal energy, it's gonna depend on the material. But I want you to start out with the uh, intuition that there is a connection, even though the exact formula is uh, maybe a little bit uh, complicated. That's why we do have a experimentally determined relationship called specific heat capacity that you are going to see addressed in the textbook. So read about that. And, um, and I think systems will tell us a little bit about how you can, yeah. Uh, convert uh, different forms of energy into, well, different forms. Um, so so um, here we have one form of energy. So we have water that's in the pipe. And when we turn the speaker on, the water is falling down. So what you are seeing happening is the water is at some height here. So that water is turning, it has potential energy that's turning into kinetic energy. Um, so this is what you've seen in unit two. It's just happening with water, nothing fancy. Now, uh, one thing that's a little bit kind of a uh, waste here is, okay, so that potential energy turns into kinetic energy and then nothing else happens because I have a wrong device here. <laughs> I have a solar panel which uh, doesn't do anything with this water. So if I have a water mill instead, then what happens is that, um, can I get rid of, oh, I guess I need to have something here. Um, well, then what happens here is this uh, mechanical energy of the water, well, or the momentum of the water as it, it's colliding with the wheel, it's uh, imparting that momentum, it's also transferring kinetic energy, and the kinetic energy is turning this wheel. And there's some device here, you know, something similar to what they have in hydroelectric dam, that's turning the kinetic energy, mechanical energy, into electrical energy. And that electrical energy can be used to do various things. Right now it's turning a fan. It could be used to turn on a light bulb, or it could be used to turn on a more efficient light bulb. Okay, it doesn't look more efficient. Well supposed to be more efficient. Or it could be turned into heat. That's what this heating coil is. And when there's water on top, it's turning the, um, increasing the temperature of the water. And I think if I put it energy symbol, yeah, then what this illustrates is kind of transfer of this energy into different forms. So here, this gray block of energy is mechanical energy. This uh, blue block is electrical energy turning into thermal energy, which is leaving the water as it, uh, water evaporates. And um, I guess here, it's not that much energy. So it's uh, at some equilibrium where water is steaming but not boiling. Then, um, you know, you can play with this to see how different um, um, oh, now I need a solar panel, a different, um, uh, it's, you know, I guess it's not quite this description. It's a good background material for those of you who haven't seen this in your uh, middle school, high school science class. Um, and uh, I, I think all this is intuitive. And this is really where we do get our conservation of energy from. Energy is a sort of poorly defined concept where the only one thing that we hold true is that it's a conserved quantity. And when we talk, when we talk about thermal physics and thermodynamics, what we are going to look at is the conversion, transfer of energy from a form that's not thermal form 
into or, or I guess actually um, the main use of thermodynamics is how to convert um, energy that's in this uh, thermal form into mechanical energy. And I think there's actually an example of that here. Let me see. Yeah, this is an example of that here. So here we have a form of energy that is starting out as a thermal energy. And you see that as this water pipe boils, that thermal energy is turning into mechanical energy. And um, now you need some other device to harness this mechanical energy, otherwise it'll just turn back into thermal energy, which can be used to do useful work. And one way you can do that is something like this, a wheel, or um, in a more practical sense, a steam turbine at a, a power plant that burns fuel, fossil fuel. So, um, um, so this is a kind of showing how uh, you can you can take a uh, energy that starts out as thermal energy into mechanical energy, which is really the form of energy that is most useful. And there's a device here which will turn it into electrical energy. And we're going to get to that in chapter 11. That's one of the reasons electricity and magnetism is such an important thing. And this electrical energy is really the most versatile form of energy. It's the most useful form of energy in our modern life because we have all these different devices that are able to do different things with this um, uh, with this uh, uh, electrical energy. It can be used to generate light and it can be used to do other um, right now light. And it can be used to also do other mechanical things. Um, there's a, a, something called the electric motor, which we'll get to in chapter 11, <laughs> that uh, turns this electric energy back into mechanical energy. Um, so so I, I hope uh, uh, you have this intuition, or if you didn't, then this uh, simulation, you can play with it yourself, and that it's uh, helpful. Uh, all right. Um, do I want to talk about friction? Well, I guess I can talk about friction briefly. Um, that's, uh, so um, we did talk about friction starting with the unit one, like friction is what we blamed uh, when we apply a force on this object and we kind of stop applying force, it uh, stops and friction is what we are blaming on or uh, why the motion doesn't continue after you stop applying force. And, um, and friction is also what we blamed on for non-conservation of mechanical energy. As in, um, whenever it seemed that mechanical energy wasn't conserved because uh, something that's moving on a, a non-frictionless surface comes to a stop. So the kinetic energy that had before disappears. Where do they go? Uh, we said it goes into heat and sound, and <laughs> how. Um, and this is kind of the microscopic view that illustrates how that happens. So uh, the way you should look at it is every surface, when you go down into small enough scale, is rough. So as two things slide against each other, as these two things slide against each other, um, there's work being done on these two uh, molecules uh, from those rough surfaces and edges. And that work being done, it actually goes into mechanical energy, microscopic mechanical energy of these molecules. They are vibrating more because they are receiving more mechanical energy. And that vibration at our macroscopic scale is felt as increase in temperature. That's what this is showing. So, um, so you know, if you want to turn mechanical energy into heat, we know many ways to do that. One of that is just to use friction. Um, so that's what this simulation is showing. 